This is an introduction to the basics of PLM course. My name is John Stark. I'm the course instructor. The subject of the course is Product Lifecycle Management, PLM. I'll tell you seven things about the course. Its structure and length, its objectives and level, the approach to learning about PLM, the course's contents, something about the course instructor and the course book, the course sessions, and then make a short summary. I'll start with the course structure and length. The basics of PLM course is divided into eight parts. The expected participant effort is about four hours per part, probably about 35 hours in total for the whole basics of PLM course. Next, the objectives and the level of the course. Each of the eight parts of the course has its individual objectives, which will be described at the beginning of that particular part. In addition, the overriding objective of the basics of PLM course is to enable people to participate more fully in the PLM activities of a company. Now, the level of the course. I've worked with companies on more than 100 PLM projects. Time and time again, I've seen people involved in these projects who have very little understanding of PLM. As a result, they make very little contribution to PLM progress. This course is intended to remedy that situation. It gives a general introduction to product lifecycle management from a multidisciplinary business perspective. It can be seen as an onboarding tool for anyone in a company involved with PLM activities. The basics of PLM course was designed to give a general introduction to the subject of PLM covering its main components. It can be thought of as a PLM 101 course. It will help those working with PLM in a company to understand the basics of PLM and why it's so important. Next, coming to our approach to learning about PLM. The course objective is an ambitious one. On one hand, PLM is a huge subject and the scope is enormous, so it wouldn't be possible to include everything about PLM in one course. The course would be far too long. It would take years to give and years to complete. On the other hand, it's not possible in a relatively short course to address every subject in PLM down to the lowest level of detail. So how have we decided to approach learning about PLM? Our approach to enabling learning about PLM is a modular one. Instead of having one huge monolithic course, we propose several modular courses that build on each other. And Basics of PLM is the first of these modules. It provides an introduction to PLM and is a prerequisite for the other courses. And now to the contents of basics of PLM. As you've seen, there are eight modular parts to the course. I'll tell you briefly about the contents of each of these parts. The introduction, part one, answers questions such as what is PLM, why PLM, where PLM, who PLM. Part two, the environment of PLM focuses on the drivers for PLM, the challenges and opportunities that lead companies to product lifecycle management, such as globalization, new technologies, more competition, increased regulation. If you've worked in a product company, you'll probably have heard of a new product development process and an engineering change management process these are business processes, the subject of part three. There are not only the two I just mentioned, there are many more. Their organization and management is part of PLM. Part four addresses product data. This is the data that defines and describes the product throughout its life cycle. There's a lot of it. I've worked with companies that have thousands of data and more than a hundred different documents describing a single product. All this product data has to be organized and managed. Part five addresses PLM applications. These are used throughout the product lifecycle. You may have heard of product data management systems, PDM systems. That's one application. In many companies, there are dozens more. Their organization and management is part of PLM. The subject of part six is organizational change management. OCM. A typical PLM initiative has objectives to improve performance. That implies changing the organization, 
changing the way people work. Managing this change is a part of PLM. The subject of part 7 is project management. Activities within the scope of PLM may account for 30% of a company's activities. Improving these activities can lead to a big project, the PLM initiative. It has to be organised and management. That, that's also part of PLM. Part 8 looks at the PLM initiative. A PLM initiative often addresses all the other parts together, the business processes, the product data, the PLM applications, organisational change, project management. The PLM initiative can be big and have a wide scope. This part of the course looks at the typical activities of a PLM initiative. The course is based on my experience, my experience of working with companies that innovate, develop, manufacture and support products. So it's important for participants in the course to understand my experience, understand and know where I'm coming from. I have a lot of practical experience of PLM. I've worked with many companies, more than 100, over many years, in many countries, in many areas of PLM. This course is an academic theory. It's based on real life experience. It's relevant for people working in industry. Next, I have widespread experience. The course isn't based on experience in one industry sector or with one product. My experience is in different industry sectors with different products at all stages of the product life cycle. Next, transfer of knowledge. I've always felt that it was important to communicate my experience and try to help companies and people progress with new technologies and approaches. I've done that in different ways. For example, writing books such as this one, the course book. Next, coming to the course sessions. This is an introductory course, but the scope of PLM is so vast that even an introductory course has to cover very many topics, potentially hundreds of topics. Which topics should be included in what order? And how can we be sure that we don't forget a topic or wastefully repeat it? To address this issue, again, we took a modular approach. A course is made up of parts. Each part is made up of lessons and lessons are made up of sessions. Each part of the basics of PLM course is made up of about 25 short sessions. Each session addresses concisely a specific topic. On average, a session is about five minutes long. The longest is about 13 minutes. In total, there are about 220 sessions in the basics of PLM course. Briefly summarizing the introduction Basics of PLM is the first of a series of modular courses. It's in eight parts, each requiring about four hours effort. Basics of PLM is a level 101 course. It can be seen as an onboarding tool. Its objective is to help people to participate more fully in the PLM activities of a company. And that's the end of the introduction.